In the first page, I have that Google bar, which I use a lot to, to make Google do certain tasks for me in the video. I'm using it to play relaxing sounds or asking how the weather is, but there's many more uses to it. It can set alarms or it can put events on your calendar or check the news. It's really useful. Then I have four apps that come with my phone, like Play Store and Themes and Music. Then I have like all the apps from Google. The ones I use the most are Google Maps, YouTube. Here at the bottom, I have Google Docs, which I use to share documents with colleagues and stuff if we're doing a, a paper together. But if I, because it's, it's synchronized with my computer and if I want to read something, I, I just, it's very simple because it just connects completely with my, all my devices. And the same thing with Google Slides, I can just put anything that I want to study here. Then I have the weather app, the gallery, and the settings at the lower bar, my messages, and that gratitude app that you saw me talk about in the last video, and add just a thumbs reach my camera. alarm clock, calendar, files, and the health app which come with the phone. Then I have the Korean folder. First I have an app that's just for certain sounds that I tend to forget the most. I have Korean word which gives me one word per day to check and it's a great way to learn vocabulary because it's just simple it's just one thing per day and you can see you can hear it and see it applied in a sentence learn Korean which is just a great way to store vocabulary you might need on the go but it's just a great way to learn as well Drops is another vocabulary app. Each drop is a new word. Yeah, and then you can do cool games to learn vocabulary, like matching. I think for beginners, the matching one is better, just easier to recognize the words. Korean conversation is probably my favorite because it forces you to learn how to structure sentences and learn vocabulary in a manner that makes you practice as well. It's basically a conversation between two people about different topics depending on the chapters that you, that you choose. Then you have to make flashcards and actually talk the sentences. And then you finally get to practicing the sentence, the dialogues, either as one or the other. Then on the folder others, I have first of all Snow, which is a filter app. I use it not just for my face, but for filming and editing. And SoundCloud, I can't really find lo-fi music as good as I find on SoundCloud. I love this app because it gives recommendations for new artists. King's Goal, which is a simple saving app. You set goals to buy things. Then I have my camera app, which is a simple way to control the camera afar. Then Google Translate and then News app. If I'm not careful, I will not listen to anything. And my favorite part is this minute by minute feature that they have. So I can check like what, what news just came out 20 minutes ago. Then I have the Classical Manager app that you saw me talk about on the last video and then skyscape i can explore prices of trips and not just the actual airplane ticket but also uh, the hotels and reviews of different attractions and stuff and you can also check price predictions which is my favorite part because you can see along the year what is the cheapest to travel this is just for daydreaming purposes unfortunately but i think it's a really good app if i have 
an average travel. Then I have email and notepad which come with the phone. And then I have a folder which is just for social media. If I ever feel like a social media app is taking way too much of my time, I will uninstall it and then install it again. I have a tools folder, which I have Spotify for music, contacts, calculator, radio, a recorder, and I have this really cool app actually that is probably my favorite show, which is called Note Block. I'm going to show you right now. But as you can see, I have, I'm going to take a picture in a dark, like it was starting to get dark and, and it just works magic to digitalize. You see, it's so freaking clear. It's like, it's actually a printer. It's, um, it's magic. I normally send the, the digitalized photo as an email and it converts to a pdf document and i have shaky alarm which i already talked about and then two lo-fi music apps lo-fi radio is the one that i like the least because sometimes it buffers but i feel like it plays different music from the other one but basically you always need wi-fi connection but it's just a radio that you can close your phone and doesn't have to be turned on as much as like if you were listening a video on YouTube. Nightwave Pause, it, it, I feel like it has a different aesthetic and a different type of music. Then I have iMark Up. It basically allows me to doodle on a photo of mine. And sketchpad sometimes I just sketch stuff it would be better if I had a tablet and a stylus I have flashlight which came with my phone and then I have a bunch of apps that I don't ever touch and finally in collage which is um, allows me to create collages of photos sometimes for thumbnails there's the games folder um, and Hogwarts mystery I love this game so much. Um, I first came in contact of it through a friend and she was playing and I was watching her play and I was like, What's, what game is that? And she told me and then I completely forgot about it. And then months later, I saw an ad on Instagram for this game and I was like, I have to download it. And I've been completely obsessed over it. I think the game is so, like the design of the game is amazing and the storyline, it's not lazy. I think they have a lot of effort put into it and you don't have to buy anything and you have to progress in the game and I don't think waiting for energy is too bad because I do have to do other stuff it's a good excuse to get out of the game Sudoku app. I really like it because it highlights the same numbers and stuff. And I have cats are cute. Cats just appear and you build a village and it's just a wholesome tapping game. Then I have Tsuki which is an app of a rabbit that always lived in the city and now is discovering the beauty of the quiet away from the city life. Don't do anything with the game, you're just watching him just be. So I think it's a very wholesome game. Then I have Odyssey. Odyssey, I don't know which is the most aesthetically beautiful and the sound is amazing. You can also swipe to the left on the main screen and you can just be in the ambience for however you like and I think that's a pretty good um, feature.
feature that they have. Then I have Fernflower, which is another relaxing game. The music is very, and the steps of the character is very pleasing, it's just a tapping game. Then I have two charades apps, and I have Minesweeper, which is such a throwback game. I, it's just a childhood game that I've played. And I have The Simpsons game, which I can't, I can't find myself to delete this game. I don't really play it anymore. Basically, Homer blows up the whole town, and you get characters one by one, and you have to build the city. So I can't, I can't delete it. Uh, and then I have the productivity folder. A few of these apps you've already know. The new ones, I have, I downloaded a new Pomodoro app. It's just a simple, no strings attached Pomodoro. And you can just set in the colors and the time timer things for the small break, for the long break. Then I have app block which is just a, an app that blocks other apps whenever i don't really use this because i can normally control myself but if i'm feeling pretty unmotivated i'll normally use it for however i want then i have study bunny which was an app that someone recommended to me on the previous video and i downloaded it and i named it oscar and even though i don't really use it it has cool features like you can set up tasks and you can set up flashcards. I don't really use it but I've developed a strange affinity to the bunny. Then I have Quizlet um, which you've heard me talk about in my flashcards video. Then I have Google Calendar, which is synced to my regular phone's calendar app, and it's basically the same, but I particularly like this feature of setting up reminders for goals, which is pretty neat. It sets reminders to do stuff, but I normally use it if I don't have my physical planner around, because I do everything on my physical planner. Then I have the TED Talk app, which is a big recommendation because even though the YouTube channel is basically the same, and here you can listen to it like a podcast. You can turn off your phone and listen to it on the train. Day on planet Earth, weighing up to seven tons. Stand it has all the TED Talks and you can navigate them, you can explore them, it's great. You can watch the TED Talk, put on the subtitles, and you can even download the video and watch it offline. Then I have my school's app. It's been implemented this year and it's so slow and so unintuitive. And I use it to access files from my subjects, so the syllabus and stuff. Notion is an app that kind of blends everything into one workspace. You can have lists and charts and 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 pages in pages. Very inclusive, like all in one workspace. You can download a desktop version for your computer. There's also a website. I normally just go to the website. And there's also an, a, an app for your phone or tablet. And it kind of just, it's very nice. It's very neat. However, I've just begun organizing the semester. So it's not like I, it's pretty empty at the moment. I just have one deadline. I'm still organizing. I might revisit again in a future video because I do think it's very worth it, especially because of this, um, liberty to do anything you want in the app and finally i have habitica which is a habit tracker which i'm not currently using as well because it's just it's just way too much effort because I, i've become 
used to do this every single day without really like thinking about it health folder i have chronometer which is an app that tracks nutrients and vitamins and everything from one food code doesn't work for portuguese food just i think it's just for americans then i have clue which is for tracking menstrual cycle and then i have zero which is a fasting app i don't normally fast and if i do it's like a circadian rhythm stuff and it's not too intense i like this app because it's clean it has article but um, yeah that's that's just a a personal thing I don't, I don't want to influence anyone to download this app if they're not interested at all. I have the drinking water reminder app sets kind reminders throughout the day. Self-care app, which you already heard me talk about. Daily Dozen is an app that allows me to track portions of things that I should include throughout the day, like vegetables, fruits, and there's even now a 21 list. I like to use it sometimes when I feel like I'm more unhealthy than usual. Then I have this app that's for running and I don't use it anymore as often because now I'm running on the treadmill and I used to use Zombies Run running outside. It plays like you're on this mission to get things and you have to to run away from zombies and it gives you the sound of the zombies which is pretty cool but if you're going to download this app and use it please be careful don't let yourself be distracted if you're running on the street be aware of your surroundings I'm not going to go into detail completely because I would be here forever I basically have stuff with anatomy or physical exam it's quick to check if I need to apps with scores basically all that I'm going to Oh, and the Kahoot app, which uh, some teachers like to play games during lectures. And I have the piano folder. I basically just enjoy music theory a lot. I'm still learning. I don't have a piano yet. I don't have a keyboard yet. This is just a, a way to for me to learn stuff. The first app was just for reading. Second app is for rhythm. It has different exercises to learn. And then third app, which is the most difficult one, is to recognize intervals. Then I have an app just with a circle of fifths and that's it. Then I have two apps. I actually de deleted the last one because they're basically the same. But it allows you to watch the piano play the songs. And here's where I deleted the other one moving around folder the first one has buses from lisbon and i can see the stops and at what time they should be there move it is the same thing but it allows me to do directories between two places and see what's the best option what's delayed then i have just a train app finally i have yelp which helps me find places to eat, new places to drink coffee, the place that I'm currently at or where I want to visit and it has reviews and pictures. Finally, the last three folders. I have others, two apps that I don't really know that I come with my phone. My gym app and finally Reddit. Some posts are really fun and it's like scrolling down. My SIM card needed all these apps. And then I have the shopping folder, which um, has my bank app. I have Amazon shopping and the IKEA app. I love the IKEA app to find new releases. I have PayPal and then this Club VIPs app, which should be able to get drinks from Starbucks here to accumulate points. But I haven't been able to figure out. I don't know how to function with it. Best style and AliExpress. And that's it. That's what I have on my phone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed.